Hey everyone, hi. Hey Linda, hey, it's Brooklyn everyone. And hello, Linda Moon, we're here. Hi everyone. <laughs> hey, welcome, welcome, welcome to this month's deep dive. Um, we are gonna go deep on two of this month's resources, but before we go anywhere, Linda, how are you? What's going on? Hi everyone, uh, I am trying to channel the Christmas spirit, hoping that that'll make everything better. <laughs> So, hence the hat. I know we're talking about January today, but you know, it just had to be present for y'all. But life is good. How are you, Brooklyn? I'm fantastic. I'm I'm sitting on the floor of my church because it just happens to have the best Wi-Fi. So here we are doing what we can. We're so glad you're all here. So, like I said, welcome to this month's deep dive. We are so glad that you're here with us. Um, we're gonna kind of dive in and jump into these resources. So if you use Grow, just remember that we're gonna give you some pro tips for how to use these resources and to maybe catch some stuff that you might have missed at first glance. And if you don't use Grow, that's okay too. We hope that you'll steal all of these ideas, do whatever you want with them. And we actually have something free for everyone, whether you're a Grow user or not, you're gonna love it so much, especially if you like planning things and being Ooh. a little planner. A little Thanks. <laughs> a little planner, yeah. So, um, so yeah, are you ready to hop into things? Yes, let's do it. Okay, cool. So this month, um, the month of January, we are going to cover a five-week series about the early life of Jesus ministry. Um, and then we're going to show you the 2021 Pastors Planner. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. But I'm, I'm getting there too quickly. Um, but these are two resources that we suggest using in January, and we want you to leave all the comments, all the questions, all the feedback. Um, please interact with each other. This is where we get our best ideas during this deep dive. So gif it up over there, or gif. I don't know where you're from, how you say it, but <laughs> yeah, just make sure you write in the comments your questions, your feedback, and your ideas as we're going. So um, for those of you who don't know, um, before we dive into that, I'm Brooklyn. I am the director of content development over here at Stuff You Can Use. And and Linda, who are you real quick for those um, viewers who may have just met you for the first time? Hi, I'm the lead editor of Children's Ministry Resources. So I oversee and curate all kids related content here at Grow and Stuff You Can Use. Yeah, Linda is amazing. You guys, every month I work with Linda, I find out another superpower, like special talent. Like this <laughs> one, she was literally recording choreographed dance moves for VBS, which I was very impressed by. So, There's no way y'all like to embarrass me like this. <laughs> <laughs> You're so good at everything. Oh, You'll be dead. Okay, so let's jump in. Don't forget to ask questions, make requests, share ideas. This is a family. We share it all. Okay. All right. So first things first, we're going to dive into our first series, which is um, a series called Subscribe Now. Let me go ahead and share my screen for you. And this is for volume four of Grow Kits for those of you guys who are following along. <laughs> yes. Let's see. I'm just making sure you can see where I'm at. Yeah. Yay. Okay. So here we are. Um, the series title is Subscribe Now. This is the early life and ministry of Jesus. So the whole um, theme of this is following, influencing, subscribing. We think it's great for January because it's the time when most people are trying new things and being influenced by a lot of things and people. So we're going to be focused on the Gospels. And Linda, I'll be scrolling with you, but why don't you just tell us um, a little bit about this, who wrote this series, and what can we expect? Uh, yes, so uh, Subscribe Now Elementary is written by Catherine Huang Jin, if you're here, hi. Um, she's actually an old friend of mine from middle school, it's so crazy, and like we reconnected, and I was like, hey, you're a children's pastor, I'm a children's pastor, like right for Grow, and she did an amazing job with the series, and um, the preschool, preschool curriculum for Subscribe Now is written by Tiffany Fenor, who you know very well, Brooklyn. <laughs> yes, she's amazing. Lake Linder, what's up? <laughs> yeah, so these two series, I mean, I say this about pretty much every series, and yes, I may be a little biased, but I feel like every single series, especially volume um, four, is amazing. Volume three, also amazing, but since we're on volume four, all of these series are super amazing, and I think you're gonna really love what's in store for you guys. Really excited. Awesome, okay, so let's just hop in real quick. Do you have like an idea for what the decor or like the room design is gonna look like? This is the new year, 2021. 
Do you have any recommendations for how you might design things up? Uh, yes. So since uh, subscribe now, like as you all know, it's kind of like this little trending thing that's been happening for a while. And we're talking about following and following in real life. And so we're talking about, um, you know, how, how we follow Jesus, how Jesus knows us and kind of like messaging and influencing all of the cool social media related content. So our programming and designing your room and space is gonna look a lot like that. And for those of us who are still online, like this is the perfect series for you to take online because you know, it's a lot of what we're already doing, right? We're using social media to connect with kids. Um, but now we're gonna take it even further and dive even deeper into that theme. Um, so uh, what I feel like, if especially if you're one of those people who just really needs to design your space, um, one suggestion I have for you is possibly turning your stage into like a phone, like just like the border of a phone, like if you can imagine like a sideways phone. Um, just kind of create it like cardboard. If any, if you have any like tech savvy people in your team, you can also just record a video and then kind of overlay like a border of a phone just to give it that extra touch of this is, you know, this is social media. Um, also, if you also like to go all out and decorate your stage, I don't know how many of you guys have watched uh, Dear Evan Hansen, it was a musical, but their stage was amazing. It had like all these like, you know, like live feeds happening and just things scrolling mul like multiple screens. And I know that we don't all have the budget for that kind of thing. So I would suggest, you know, you can create cardboard cutouts or banners or even just create a virtual backdrop for those of you guys who are on Zoom or if you're using a green screen. I feel like there are so many fun possibilities with this theme. Yes, I love it. I love the idea of kids like learning what it means to subscribe and what it means. They're all doing that on YouTube anyway. I know my daughter is obsessed with some YouTubers and I think it'll be really cool for them to understand how you can be influenced by other things too, especially Jesus. So it's exciting. Yeah. Um, cool. Well, let's check about, let's check out week one. Um, we are going to be talking about the story of why Jesus came into the world. The big idea for this week is we can know God through Jesus. Anything else you want to highlight for this week, Linda? Um, well, if you uh, go into the week one lesson, we so this is a little bit more of an abstract passage when it comes to Bible story, and it doesn't really have your usual gospel story kind of narrative because it is coming from John 1. Mm -hmm. um, but what's also interesting is if you have con been continuously using Grow, we did like two weeks on John the Baptist in Wait For It previously. So it ties in really nicely because we kind of laid the groundwork for who John the Baptist is and what his purpose was, and, and then kind of ties into, well, now we're going to shift that from what was John's message about Jesus and how Jesus is the light and all the good stuff from John chapter one. So um, if, if you haven't, or even if you have already done this and wait for it, I would probably review John the Baptist's story a little bit. And just to have kids understand uh, what that means or all those, you know, all the different nuances. And um, if you actually go into the lessons, um, we have a few activities that we think you might really enjoy. I mean, there's a lot of really good activities, but there's a few we wanted to draw your attention to. And the first one is called Twitter Bird Updates which is so cute. So essentially it's you make a little bird out of origami paper and then there's a whole activity that you do around that. Um, just one note for you is if you are doing this activity and you don't have origami paper, like you don't have to freak out. I mean, obviously it will work better with origami paper just because like the thickness and stuff works. But you know, you could make regular, you know, square paper out of color paper. <laughs> totally fine. Um, but I do suggest that you avoid construction paper because those tend to tear and the folds are not as nice. Um, but going along with this whole activity around Twitter bird updates, um, I would say for preteens, there's a really cool hack in there. Um, but I, it says share funny appropriate tweets. Um, and that just kind of remind me of like the whole Jimmy Fallon bit, like for hashtags. And so it'd be really fun for you to share those uh, hashtags with the kids that are really funny or like just tweets or even have kids write their own. I think that would be a really good way to engage, uh, especially the older crowd. 
And then we have the same activity in the preschool version, um, but it's, it has easier folding instructions because we know like trying to get preschoolers to even like fold it in half would be challenging. Um, so you can definitely do that, or you can find like a line drawing image of a Twitter bird and have kids color it if that would be easier. And then you can kind of suspend it on a string or like attach it to a stick for easy play with those Twitter birds. It's really exciting. I love it. I, I'm trying to imagine explaining what Twitter is to my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> can anybody explain Twitter and you know? Well, I think if you read the if you read the curriculum, I think they do a really good job of just kind of giving very simple like this is what Twitter is for those of you guys who don't know what it is. Yeah, yeah. I remember reading through this and us like kind of ideating on how do we explain this to kids and right. our writers and the editors and everybody did such a good job helping kids understand the way people communicate and how information is exchanged. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, and on that note, like this is a this I think was a very challenging series to write for preschool because you know they're not like unless they're like really crazy four or five year old vloggers, like they don't really know what social media is. But if you take a look at the preschool curriculum, I think you'll be happy with what they turned up. Yeah, for sure. All right, well, let's talk about week two. Um, well, I, let me just highlight a few more things. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Like, there's just so much to say about all of these. <laughs> Um, just a couple things um, for the big idea, just one idea I had as I was um, kind of reviewing this before we came into this deep dive. Um, it's crazy because I'm like some ideas just pop up later. Um, what would be fun is if you like in, like if you enjoy physical comedy, I would suggest have like a volunteer dress up like a subscribe button. Like you can make it out of felt or like cardboard or whatever and then give a kid like an inflatable hammer and tell them to like smash that subscribe button. And I feel like some kids would really enjoy that. So and adults too. So that's just an idea for you um, for the big idea. Um, we do have an idea in there about having this whole big idea presentation, but if you're into physical comedy, I think that would be fun for you. And, then, comedy, and I think just boys in general, some girls do, they just need a little energy release. So I like that. Exactly. Yeah, just give the most, you know, like energetic kid that hammer and have them go at it. <laughs> Um, also, uh, for the memory verse this week, um, there's a whisper challenge, and I think Brooklyn, you talked about it and wait for it at last month's deep dive. Um, but this seriously, it's such a great game to do on Zoom. In some ways, it's easier because there's like zero prep required. You just need Zoom and have kids learn how to use their mute button. And so, you know, you just turn on mute and then you have them try to like say the parts of the memory verse and have everybody guess what they're saying or vice versa, you say and have kids try to guess your words. So super fun and very easy to execute. And then the last thing I wanted to share is if you look in the preschool curriculum, which is, well, this is elementary. If you look in the preschool one later, if you have time, there's an activity called create a cell phone. And it's super cute. Like it's seriously just a blank iPhone with apps. And I'm really sorry if you're an Android user, but you know. <laughs> and and can kids can cut them out and kind of just rearrange their apps and have fun with it. And I would say you steal that for elementary. Like I feel like elementary kids would have so much fun creating their own cell phones too. So that's all I have for week one. <laughs> Well, and I think there's, I've seen preschoolers, you know, with their parents' phone cases. I know our sweet Evelyn here at our church, she loves to pretend gibberish, talk on the phone. So even with preschoolers, you have a chance. They know what phones are. They're, they're so into them. They're so much I mean, like my two-year-old is like a master at swiping and, you know, he knows how to navigate. It's, it's terrifying, but you know, they can do it. <laughs> I love it. Cool. Awesome. Well, let's move on to week two. Um, the big idea for week two is that we can know God through Jesus. Um, so what should we put into action this week or what should we look at? Um, well, I, I, I think we're still looking at the week one screen. Oh yeah, we are. Let me <laughs> for you. We can know forgiveness because of Jesus. My bad, guys. Sorry. Yeah. I'm going to scroll to where we need to be. I am scrolling for the first time on this app. So thanks for your patience. You're doing great, Brooklyn. <laughs> okay. I think we're almost there. Okay, here we go. Small group guides. Don't forget to use your small group questions with the kids. Um, mm -hmm. The printables are amazing. Every week, um, well, we're creating volume five right now, but 
the printables just keep getting better and better. And there's I the Twitter bird. Take a look at them. Yes. Oh my God. Can you guys see that? That's that is so much fun. So <laughs> origami Twitter birds for this beautiful, beautiful series. Okay, so here we go. We're in week two now. Yay. Yay. Okay, go ahead, Linda. Take it away. All right. So we're talking about knowing forgiveness through Jesus, and it is a story of Jesus being baptized by John the Baptist. Um, I would say when you're sharing the story, you would talk with kids about not only receiving forgiveness, but also exercising forgiveness, um, because I know um, praying about your sin and, and praying for forgiveness is something that, you know, is embedded into what we do every week. But kind of exercising forgiveness is a little bit tougher. And then we can kind of go deeper into what that looks like instead of just saying like forgive others love them <laughs> and so we have a few activities which i think is really fun um one is um the object lesson called vanishing coin and it's not your typical vanishing coin magic trick i think it's the funniest magic trick ever <laughs> it's hilarious you have to watch the video that we linked it to but basically it's you take a cup and you you have like a piece of like construction paper color paper whatever and then you take you cut out a little circle the same color as the paper and then you <laughs> kind of glue it onto your cup and then you put the cup upside down it's so cool like <laughs> I'm like when i watched the video and it was like two kids doing this magic trick and i'm like how did they do that <laughs> And it's so easy. So if you're a magic novice like me, um, this would be a really fun one for you to try out. Um, but you know, I know some of you guys are a lot more skilled than that. So there is also an alternative option you can do, or you know, just go crazy with that. And the whole idea is talking about what happens to our sin when God forgives us. And so it's a really great way to tie in that magic trick. Um, yeah, and the second activity I wanted to highlight is a response called Click Now. And um, depending on your church tradition, this is a great place to talk about baptism if that is what you want to do. And you could also talk with kids about receiving baptism. And so we actually provided these response cards that you could actually fill in if you want kids to learn more about what it means to be baptized. You can fill that in there. Um, but basically the response card is a way for kids to kind of take that next step like now that i know that this is available like do i want to know more do i want to go deeper and it's a good way to kind of gauge where your kids are at and it's, this is a great one if you have any newcomers too so i would say utilize that um the next one i want to highlight is an activity called just dance party and y'all probably know just dance <laughs> And again, I think I've said this before too, but like every time there's a dance party, don't just gloss over and be like, oh, my kids are not going to be into this. Like just have fun with it because we all need that break during our programming to just stop and move and dance and let it out. And so um, one hack I would suggest for this one would be if you have like actual game consoles, like have them play like actually play Just Dance or any other mm -hmm. kind of dancing game. Um, Cause what we provided was just like a YouTube video and you can follow along, which is, which is great. And then, you know, and you don't fail and miss any of the moves. So it makes you feel great. <laughs> if you have the game, that would be a, a fun way to do this one. Yeah, and we do have online hacks for this series that you can download um, separately. But one of the thoughts that I had for these dance party situations is to do them when like you're in an online situation, you have groups formed. Um, you can put kids into groups and have them make a dance move up so that when you play music as the host, that everyone's in their group is doing the same move. Um, yeah. So you can do different things with your Zoom calls and your group Google group chats and making teams. Um, we're really just starting to play around with our teams online. Um, we're starting our, we're having our first youth leader party online next Monday. So I'm excited to see how the group options work. But don't be afraid to try things as simple as dancing online because I think it helps kids have fun and maybe even feel a little bit better about not being able to go out. Yeah. So that's a really good idea. I did something similar with the memory verses for our kids last month and we had them go into breakout rooms and I actually assigned like a preteen kid to each group. And then I was like, okay, you guys are gonna come up with your own moves for the memory verse. And I thought they would just sit there and just stare at each other, but they actually <laughs> did it and they came back and it was really cool to see like just a creative way that they expressed each of the words of the memory verse. So yes, absolutely do that. 
Yeah, I didn't realize the power of groups in online format. So please don't forget, like kids know how to do it because they're doing it at school now. And you can utilize that as a creative environment for your online programming. Absolutely. Okay. Let's go jump into week three. Are we good on week two? Yeah, absolutely. Um, one last thing is there is an activity called Washed Away, which would really only work in uh, person. And this activity is in both elementary and preschool. And it's basically helping each other wash off washable paint, which is really cute and nice and wholesome. Um, but if you're meeting online, um, again, use that Zoom share screen feature. You can share your whiteboard screen and you can have kids um, like erase something away with their eraser tool. So that would be a really good visual to add to that lesson if you're online. So much fun. I love it. Yay. OK, so week three, we're talking about the idea that Jesus knows us. So while I'm getting there, Linda, tell us a little bit more about week three. Yes. So week three, we are talking about the story of Philip and Nathaniel and about how uh, Jesus knew that Nathaniel was under the fig tree. And I know there's a lot of debate about what that really means, like if he saw him earlier or if he actually, you know, whatever. Um, <laughs> but this story, we're just focusing on the fact that no matter how much like, you know, you think people know you or don't know you, Jesus does know you and the whole you. So it's a great way for kids to kind of connect with, you know, their identity and kind of their persona and all the all these things. Um, and on a side note, um, just because I didn't mention it before, um, the preschool teaching video has really nice Bible story illustrations. And, and I know that a lot of you have always asked about finding good visual aids and they're really hard to find that are specific to the story. So even if you, you think, oh, it's just for preschool, like if you just want to show the Bible story portion of Callie's world, I think um, that would be really helpful for you to have a visual. And on a side note, um, we have like a K through eight mix setting at my church and my seventh graders love Kelly's world it's so <laughs> interesting yeah so I would like I create these like online forms for kids to do bible study like they would answer questions and watch videos and like and then turn them into me um and then so I would link the kids like the younger kids one to Kelly's world and the older kids one to grow tv which is our weekly elementary video um but then i had like a few upper graders like sixth and seventh graders who would watch like callie's world instead so they would like turn in all these like pity things and it's so funny and i'm like why are you doing this are you just getting lazy you don't want to do upper grade things and they're like no we just really like callie's no oh, i love callie's world too you guys there there's something to say about an amazing puppet you know like i i remember this week we were watching that show i don't know if anybody's watched it but it's it's called Dear, and then they like have like a famous person, and they read letters. It's on Apple Plus. So I was watching Dear Big Bird, <laughs> and just realizing how much Big Bird meant to me, and still does. Like, I puppets just connect with us in a different kind of way, and I think Callie has that opportunity. She's mm -hmm. really funny and cute and quirky. Yeah, yeah. she's got some of course of challenges. Yeah. So she's sad. Think, <laughs> yeah, she's a, little, she's a little sassy sometimes, but. <laughs> Um, I, I don't underestimate the power of the preschool videos. You can use them in elementary as well. Um, I think adults, I remember when I was just kind of previewing, when we were just testing the videos out, my eighth grader was, what are you watching? She came over to see what was going on. So yeah, yeah. it looks like, um, oh, oh my gosh, someone saying road trip was their favorite, the rap. Yeah. That was our favorite too. Yeah. So we yeah. can't stop singing it. My two-year-old still does that. Every time I go, where are we going, Kelly? He goes, hey. Yeah, hey. <laughs> but yeah, so if you haven't checked out Callie's World yet, you have to because we spend a lot of time on the scripts and, and Ruel and the whole team behind Callie's World is so amazing. So Yeah. yeah. And sure. another, another nod to Callie's World is that this would be the perfect month to show it to even your upper graders because Callie is a vlogger. And so it goes totally, it just ties in perfectly with the whole social media thing. Yes, that is yeah. a good point. I didn't even think about that. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, sometimes we have to think about blogging when it comes to preschoolers, blogging, because we're like, wait, do they even know what a blog is? But <laughs> I think they're getting to know it pretty quickly. So. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, cool. Okay, so week three, is there anything else you wanted to share? Before? Yes. Um, let's talk about a few of these activities, which again, you're going to love. <laughs> There's one called Friendwick 
friend request and it's super fun and it's super low prep and i know how busy we all are um low prep is our best friend and so check out friend requests um basically you're holding up a sheet and you have like two teams on either side of the sheet and then you have one person you or they can choose like one person from their team to come up and stand directly behind the blanket and then leaders hold up the blanket and then like once you drop the blanket the first person to yell out the other person's name like wins and it's really fun i i mean it's so like so easy to do and it, kids have so much fun with that you know because they have this like aha i got you first kind of thing so i yeah. want to play this game so right. Just, right. just so you know <laughs> yeah like i'm thinking about like how that would work in a zoom setting like maybe like change out all your names have them turn off their camera and then be like, one, two, three, turn on your camera. I don't know. I think that's yeah. genius. Try it, try it. Tell us how it goes. But yeah. yeah. Have the kids okay. Try okay. Great okay. Games. And if you guys try it and find something that works for you, please share with us. Again, we love seeing what you do with Grow in your environment. It's the best. So much fun. Cool. The another one um, we have is called New Friend Bingo. And so every kid gets a bingo worksheet and they have to go around and ask um, their friends other people in the group to kind of sign a category that pertains to them and you guys we created four different versions of this printable for you so you do get like for you. a variety of bingo boards and a bunch of different questions like it was really fun to make i mean i didn't make it obviously our brilliant designer made it um but like it was really fun to kind of type out all these questions um again Super fun, so easy to execute. And so I have two tips for you regarding preschool and preteens. When you do this activity with preschoolers, I think the bingo board that we provided for you in preschool is actually a lot, it's a lot less reading. I think we provided pictures so kids can actually see what each of the categories are. Um, instead of having kids go around signing each other's names for preschoolers, I would definitely use stickers. Just give them a roll of stickers that they can stick on each other's sheets. Oh, that's, that's a cute cool. idea. Like I would actually do that for elementary too, just because you know we love stickers. Um, and then for preteen, I would make this even more challenging. Um, so just add in different rules. Like uh, you have to get five in a row for bingo, obviously, but you have to say like all five of those have to be different names, or they have to be different genders, or a different grade. Like you know, or you could only like have like, them pass it and sign it. They can't talk like just add little challenges and i think preteens will appreciate that added difficulty and then also you could even if you think this went by way too fast and they got bingo in like the first five seconds <laughs> go for a blackout where they have to try to get like the whole board filled out so that will be really fun too i'm looking at these cute little spots i ate an apple this week oh my goodness i wear glasses <laughs> And my glasses, it's so cute. So you guys, every single one of these bingo cards is absolutely fantastic. Yeah. So even if you don't do this activity in the series, go ahead and print these printables and save this out for a fun time because yeah, kids will love it. And I love the sticker idea. I love the stamp idea. Mm -hmm. uh, you can use a crayon. You can use whatever you want. You don't have to have anything fancy. Absolutely. Uh, you can even, if you wanted to, if you can't print something out, you could have kind of like if you're doing this on zoom you could kind of keep track have them keep track of how many and you do like a number count instead of blackout or whatever mm -hmm. um yeah what are some other ways you could do this online linda um yeah i would definitely like mail it out to them and you know Ooh, yeah like or have them print it out and then just call it out you could even like call out some of these categories and have them fill it out on their own or try to think of people in their group who fit, I don't know. I think there's you know a lot I'm happy when they see as a parent to have bingo cards mailed to my kid because <laughs> it's so hard. I know it's just a little thing, but when my daughter gets homework sent home and I have to print out something, it's like the whole process of like opening something and printing it and finding printer paper and ink cartridge and all this stuff. So yeah, if you have the resources to print and send or have them pick them up at church, maybe you give them to parents or something like that. Maybe there's like a activity box pickup you have every week, kind of like yeah. volunteer, they do lunches where kids can go to the school and pick up lunches. So maybe yeah. you could create a little drive by on a weekly basis with your Twitter bird um, origami folder <laughs> things, your yes. cell phone printable and give everybody like a little pack and an envelope 
and maybe have them marked week one, week two, week three, week four, so you don't have to do it more than once. Maybe it's just once a month. Yes. Then if you're online, they could have their little pack for the series, and when it's time to do things, they'll have it right there at their little fingertips, which would be yes. so fun. Yes, and before we move on, I just want to highlight a two more things, not like really in depth, but just wanted to give a nod to it because I feel like for an elementary series, like we're getting real deep. And so there's a reflection module called privacy setting, which was like honestly a devotional for me. <laughs> I was <just laughs> reading it. It's so simple, but it's it's actually really profound talking about how um, why there are privacy settings on social media. So it's kind of a little lesson in there too. And in addition to that, it's like, well, there are things that like we don't share with others, but God knows like our innermost you know, secrets and things that we don't really share with others. So check that out and have really good discussions with your kids about that. And the last thing is for elementary and preschool, we have an activity called tag a friend. Basically, it's you draw a picture of a friend you'd like to invite to church and then you draw a little like square around their face like you're tagging them like in a photo. And then like there's a line that says like, what well, when you do this, when you tag a photo, you're saying, I like having you in the picture. And I thought that was so cute. And and like if Elle were here, like she'd say it would make her barf because she thinks it's so cute. <laughs> oh, it would. We we hate it so much. That's exactly what we do. It is just so adorable. Yeah. And as an adult, I really like that too. Like I like having you in the picture. We right? yeah. What a statement. Instead of oh status symbol. You're in my right. picture, I'm in your picture, but I like having you in my life. Man, if every child can know this, if every adult can know this, mm -hmm. the world would be a lot kinder place. So that's so good. All right, so that's week three. Jesus knows us and we can know others. And that's kind of what our lead into week four is, which is Jesus wants us all to follow him. Mm -hmm. um, so kind of the idea is like looking at all the influence and where it comes from and how Jesus does this. and where we're going with it. Um, when we subscribe to Jesus, what are we supposed to do next? So tell us a little bit more about week four. Yeah, it's and it's awesome because we do a lot of playing around with the word follow now that it means something in real life and also something on social media and how Jesus wants us to like follow, follow him, not just click and follow. So it's gonna be really great. Um, few activities I do want to bring to your attention. The first one is an activity called Who's the Leader? Um, and this is a simple one where kids stand in a circle and then um, one kid has to turn around and then you elect a leader to start some sort of movement and all the kids have to copy that leader. And then that leader changes the movement and then everyone has to follow. And then this kid who wasn't a part of that has to figure out who the leader is. Um, it's actually surprisingly difficult if your kids are pretty stealthy. Um, but also there is a really fun preteen hack that you might want to use. Um, you can use this for everybody. It doesn't have to be just for preteens. Um, basically, you take like a piece of cloth and um, you kind of like say you're making a sculpture and then you say, you know, who who am I making? But basically what you're doing is as you make this sculpture, you're just imitating somebody in the group. Like you're just copying their posture, how they're sitting or whatever. And you just keep doing that until someone catches on like, oh, okay, you're what this cloth has nothing to do with, <laughs> with anybody. I have to just watch what you're doing. And I think there's something really, like a really good object lesson in that activity, so. I love yeah. it, so good. And I love the preteen hacks. Um, there's a bunch there. There's a bunch in every single week. There are hacks for um, students with special needs, hacks for preteens. We have our memory verse, um, sign language and ASL mm -hmm. options. There's so many ways that you can make this material inclusive and intentional. So if you are serving a population that has some different needs, make sure you kind of look through each PDF because each week has a bunch of those little opportunities for you to pivot things. And you can always change it up. You know, We would love to hear what you're doing to modify things. I think mm -hmm. it helps us as writers and as editors um, when you share the things that you're doing to modify, I would love to know just so that we can continue making great stuff for you. Yes. So good. Another activity is an activity called Fishing for Followers. And this in this one, they get to kind of make their own video, um, but you know, make it kind of more like stuff that they understand. Because honestly, even my two-year-old has his favorite influencer. <laughs> like those of you guys who have toddlers, my son is obsessed with Flippy. 
And um, he can't, he doesn't know his alphabet, but he knows how to spell Blippi. So that's a little, <laughs> a little alarming, but also kind of funny. And so what I, our kids did this with breaking news where they like pretended to be like news anchors, but they have a lot of fun pretending to be like these online personalities and influencers. And even like my six year old, like he plays with his Legos. Nobody's watching him, but he like talks to himself and pretends he's on camera. And he's just like, so friends, I'm gonna talk about this today. Make sure you like and subscribe my video. And I'm just like, what are you talking about? <laughs> but it's like such a, it's like so ingrained in the kinds of videos they watch. Um, so have kids pretend doing that and they might embrace that. And preteens could even pretend to be their favorite influencers because by the time, you know, they're in the preteens, they do have their favorites. And so they can just kind of copy what they do. And that'd be really fun for them to try out. Awesome. I love it. So good. Yeah. I, I'm trying to remember. I feel like this one had really fun printable. Do you remember what printables are in this week? Um, and this week, I don't recall, but that coloring page, if you guys are paying attention to coloring pages, um, the little play bar is actually progressing. <laughs> Just a little Easter egg for you. Yay! It's the details. It's the details. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, and then yeah, so, was this little activity uh, oh yeah yeah okay so that's for a response activity called like and subscribe and again this is pretty deep like there's this one part where we write just like when you subscribe to something you get access to view some cool things when we subscribe to Jesus we get access to God and it's like a very simple and easy way to kind of put it in social media terms which I thought was really cute <laughs> Awesome. I love it. Cool. Well, I'm so excited about subscribe now, everybody. I can't wait to hear all the ways that you make it awesome. Like you're amazing. I'm already looking at some of your comments. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for letting us know. Have, we actually have one more week of subscribe now. Oh, we do? January. Yeah, January is a five-weeker. So. My <laughs> bad. My bad. Stephen <laughs> May got this. So let's go back to week five, you guys. I did not put that in my notes, but it is definitely in the series. So let's go to that. Absolutely. Tell me all about it. What's going on for week five? Week five is a great one. Um, so now we're kind of like, it's like in summation of all of these, like subscribing and following and liking. Um, we're bringing it to like the idea of the message of Jesus powerful, because no matter like what, you know, your content kind of aims are, the message has to be good and so that's where we're kind of bringing it around to and we're talking about the story of jesus helping a man who is being tormented by an evil spirit um this one is a tricky one with kids because you know we're talking about like demon possession and exorcism <laughs> and stuff but um like don't focus so much on that because we don't want to mislead kids into thinking that like do i have an evil spirit or like does that person have an evil spirit like we don't want to kind of get into that area so let's focus more on what the message was what jesus was doing that jesus was powerful enough to not only you know you know heal things that are visible but can deal with the invisible and um and, and we can tie that into how like a powerful social media post can stir people to action. You can start a movement with a hashtag and that the message of Jesus is even more powerful than all of that. So that's exciting uh, for, for uh, the music for this month. So we've introduced um, some fun songs for this month all throughout. But for week five, I do want to uh, point out the preteen hack. Um, that Stephen Bay wrote, um, there's a really good point where he says to not play the kid version of the song that we suggest. Oh, yeah. And that's a really good one to make note of just throughout when you're doing preteens. Like if you wanna play like a song by Lauren Daigle, like don't play the kid's version of it, play the actual version of it. And I think preteens will really appreciate that. Yeah, so I love these hacks. They are so helpful, mm -hmm. uh, especially for those fifth graders who are kind of over their fifth grade life right now. <laughs> um, they, they're still childish, but growing up to the point where they're trying to differentiate themselves from everyone else. So I love that. Yeah. And I, don't know if you saw, I don't know if you saw like Brooklyn, I think you had it up, but we have a printable called predictive text. And yes, it's so... Okay, so this is actually, I think this might be the DM story. Okay, so let me talk about this real quick. This activity yeah, called. I wanted, I wanted you to talk about this because I really love what this helps kids do. Yes. 
Okay. So in this activity, um, it's kind of engaging with the story. Like, imagine you were there watching this happen. Then, like, how would you have reacted? What would you have messaged to your friends about it? And so it gives kids a chance to kind of have a pretend conversation. Um, but there's a special needs hack that I think you could even use for like all your students is um, you take two devices with messaging capabilities and have them actually message each other like, you know, kind of as an example. And I think that's a really good one for them to actually like try messaging, like instead of having to write it out, especially if you have like, not like people who are, um, who might need extra assistance with the writing portion. And um, for the preschool version of this exact same activity, um, you could use video messages. So we suggest that, you know, you have leaders pre-record messages to the kids or have kids that kind of record a message and like tell us your reaction to this story and i think that'd be a really good way for kids to engage and yes this is the predictive text printable i was talking about it is so fun um it's for the memory verse so basically um after we're having kids fill in the word that comes after each part of the memory verse and i feel like i don't know there's like five or six of them mm -hmm. I think this would be really fun for kids. I mean, super easy, right? But it's so cute, you guys. Predictive text, so cute. I am the ways, isn't that awesome? <laughs> <laughs> I am the ways, the ways, the truths, and the lies. Yes. Um. Yeah, I love this so much. It's beautiful. Sometimes when we're coming up with these ideas, we're not sure how they'll turn out, and they just, they these are great. I think it gives kids just plenty of opportunity to kind of fill in the blanks and own their the response, you know, to make these ideas their own. And they may not have their own cell phone, so this would be like a perfect opportunity. Yay, we're getting lots of love, love, love this. I'm so Yay. happy. Cool. <laughs> we're running out of time and we want to get to this pastor's planner. So let's jump over to Unbox real quick from volume three in case some leaders are using that this month. Um Linda, you want to go ahead and start talking about it while I get it yes, lined absolutely. up for us? Volume three, January, um, is a series called Unboxed. I need to stop saying this, but it's such a good series. <laughs> it's such a good series. Um, it's a five week series all about spiritual gifts. The elementary version is written by Stephen Bay, who coincidentally wrote the preteen hacks for Subscribe Now. So you can tell we love him. And just a little West Coast shout out to you. Um, <laughs> he's from California. Um, and the preschool version is written by Kathy Phillips. Again, dynamite amazing writer. These are just, we have some top notch people writing for us, and that's that's always so fun and so meaningful to read. So uh, we are talking again, we're talking about spiritual gifts. So week one, we're talking about like kind of this idea, the big idea is everyone has spiritual gifts. And this, if you look in the scripture portion of this, you'll see that Stephen actually made a really good concise list of the spiritual gifts that is more uh, like is easier to understand for kids. And then there's also a printable provided for the scripture activity that you might not notice, um, but it says in the instructions to like create this, but we have created it for you. So, so don't go ahead and make that <laughs> look through all your printables first. Um, so that's the first week where um, kids are learning all about what spiritual gifts there are. In week two, we're talking about now the body of Christ and how God uses my gifts to help others and how kids can kind of identify what gifts they might have or something that they would want to have and helping kids understand that spiritual gifts are not just something I'm good at, but something I can use to serve God and others. Um, it's also a really um, great lesson on inclusivity and regarding each other as equal valued members of the body of Christ. And the coloring page for this is really cute. Um, this yeah. was, I mean, this is volume three. So this was done like months and months ago, but yeah. I feel like it's so pertinent to now. And I feel that you are gonna really enjoy talking about this. Uh, for volume three, we're jumping to the Beatitudes. And now we're talking about blessings, our gifts God gives us. And we're taking this idea of gifts a little further by having them identify gifts as not just things that they have, but things that happen to them, their circumstances. Mm -hmm. Those can all be gifts as well. And again, the scripture and the coloring pages do a really great job of explaining this and visualizing it for them. Um, and uh, like this is all an, an unboxing situation, right? So let's really have fun with this. Um, I'll talk about it a little bit more after we go through all the big ideas. 
um, week four, now we're switching to treasures in heaven. The big idea is we can care about what God cares about. So it's like, okay, now I understand what gifts there are and what mine might be. And they're not just things I have, they're things that can happen to me. And now what am I doing? I'm putting them into practice. And so this is a great lesson to kind of think about the things that God cares about and not just something that makes me feel good. And then um, the last week, week five is all about generosity. And it's about like using our gifts, like just freely and cheerfully and trusting that God's going to do something amazing with it and kind of leaving those results up to God. And so we're talking about how kids should learn how to use their gifts without really expecting something in return, but actually just doing it generously and having um, and just doing it with a cheerful heart. Um, so the series concept is all about presence. So uh, I feel like there's a couple ways you can take this. One is do an extended Christmas party or like a birthday party. And so make it all fun, just lots of boxes to open, just lots of celebrations happening because we are talking about gifts and you get the most gifts on your birthday. And <laughs> second thing, uh, second way you can do this, you can kind of take it the more hipster kind of industrial look and just save all those shipping boxes you're getting this month from Amazon and <laughs> just set up a bunch of boxes everywhere and just and make unboxing videos for your messages. I think kids would have a lot of fun with that because for some reason, kids really love unboxing videos. Oh, they love, they really do. Yeah. Um, so anything else about this before we move on into the amazing planner conversation? No, I think we covered most of it. I mean, I tried to speed through it so we can really get the free stuff y'all are waiting for. But yeah, it yeah, is if you have any about questions talking about, about these, they're so good. <laughs> yeah, if you have any questions about Unbox, please let us know. Um, and please share all the good, goody, goody, goodies with each other. Um, okay, so now we just have a couple minutes left. We want to share with you a resource that's perfect for January. Um, we released this for the first time last year and you've been asking for an updated 2021 version. So now is the time. Um, this is a free resource for every human on the planet, grow or not, it's for you. You can have it. Um, so where you're going to get the planner is you're going to go to growcurriculum.org slash planner. And there you will find three types of planners, a family pastor planner, kids pastor's planner and youth pastor's planner. And you can use them all, you can have them all. Um, chop them up, print them out, do whatever you want. <laughs> They're one day each. Um, so those are the three versions and we're just gonna walk you through a day in the life of the planner. Um, and if you're using Grow each week, the Bible verses align with what you're teaching. So it doesn't really matter if you're not using Grow. Those are great Bible verses, you will love them. But if you are using Grow, those are gonna align with your teaching week, which we think is really great. So I am going to share the screen of this week and mind I'm going to go ahead and just see <laughs> here. All right, let's see. I think you can see it. Um, there it is. Okay. So this is one day in the life of the pastor's planner. So what do, what would you find in this? Um. So this is the pastor's planner. Like I don't even have any notes. Like. Oh, yeah. It's just so good. It's so good. Like that's just, mm -hmm. and so I actually use it and it helps me kind of plan out what I'm doing with the kids. I'm overseeing a lot of different departments at my church. So it really helps me kind of bring all the themes together and lets me focus on, okay, for kids, I'm going to do this for our English ministry. We're going to do this. And so it's really great. And like Brooklyn mentioned that whole side where it says think, like think about this, like mm -hmm. it ties in so great with the grow curriculum. And so it it's kind of like a little devotional and thought provoker as you prepare for that week. So yes, every single week you're gonna have a key takeaway from last week. So like a one word situation, you're always gonna know what's coming up that's majorly important. Like February second is tater tot day, you guys. Yes. So you want to know that the week of January thirty first. <laughs> so there'll be like a little tidbit there for you. There'll be a place for you to think. They're gonna be a place for you to write three important outcomes and your action items, which. Um, all of us have like a little to-do list, so you can put that there. And then, of course, since you're all pastors, you're going to have people that you want to meet with. Text, phone call, email, you can put those there. And then, like we said, there's a corresponding verse of the week that matches the curriculum that you're using. And if you're not using the curriculum, it's okay. It's still going to be great, and you will still yeah. love it. Absolutely. 
Yay. So one more time, it's, you're going to go to growcurriculum.org slash planner and you can have it. It is yours. For everyone. Free for planner. everyone. Free. Free, free, free. <laughs> I love planners. Um, they're available right now. You can go. It's there. Go for it. Have a party. Well, Linda, thank you so much for walking us through volume four. Subscribe now. Thank you, Catherine and Tiffany and Unbox. Thank you, Stephen and Kathy and everybody who contributes to all of this amazingness, which there are hundreds of people. Um, thank you for making such wonderful things. And thank you, our kids, pastors and leaders for touching the lives of so many families and being in being present in kids' lives. I know it's a hard time and we're a lot online. Just know that you're not alone. You can always come over here and have a little chat and we will all be there for each other. Yes. Yes. All right, well, thank you for joining us, everybody. We'll see you later. Bye. Oh my gosh, my computer is <laughs> almost dead. Ah! Plug it in. Hi, everybody. Are we still live? I, I don't. Oh, I think we are. <laughs>